wondered how a race car driver is able to react while driving at intense speeds, or how a tennis player can return the lightning fast serve of an opponent. For all of this to happen, electrical messages are sent to and from the brain and the spinal cord at an amazing speed. Some of these signals travel as fast as 250 miles per hour. It's no wonder that we're able to react to stimuli very quickly. We've looked at the structure of a neuron and we know that it can generate and send an electrical signal or nerve impulse that travels along the axon. But just how is this signal generated? Let's zoom in to see what's actually happening in the membrane of the cell. Remember that the fluid all around the cells is filled with ions, which are small, electrically charged atoms or molecules such as sodium and potassium. The number of these ions that sit on either side of the plasma membrane impacts the overall charge on the inside and outside of the cell. If more positive ions are on the inside of the cell, this side will have an overall positive charge. Electricity is created by the sudden reversal of the overall charge of the inside and outside of the cell. This reversal, or action potential, produces the nerve impulse. This impulse allows neurons to transmit electrical signals from one cell to the next. But how does this sudden reversal of charge happen in the first place? Let's take a look. You'll notice large proteins, or channels, that span the membrane of the axon. These channels are designed to allow ions to move back and forth across the membrane, and they're specific to the ions they transport. Also note that these channels are like a one-way door, moving traffic in a specific direction. The potassium channel moves potassium ions out of the cell, whereas the sodium channel moves sodium ions into the cell. Sodium and potassium ions diffuse through the membrane channels to the opposite sides of the membrane. They naturally move from areas where there is more of the same ion to areas where there is less. The cell membrane also contains another specialized type of protein called a sodium-potassium pump. This pump moves sodium and potassium ions back to the side where they started. It uses energy in the form of ATP to do its job. Note that this pump moves three sodium ions out of the cell and moves two potassium ions into the cell. So now, there are more positive charges on the outside of the membrane. This is called the resting potential. The sodium-potassium pump helps to maintain this resting potential until the neuron receives a signal. When a neuron receives a signal, sodium channels along the membrane open while the potassium doors stay closed. When this happens, sodium begins rushing into the cell, making the inside of the cell more positive. This change in charge is called depolarization and is what generates the electrical signal. As depolarization happens down the entire membrane of the neuron, the action potential propagates through the cell. Remember that we're only looking at one small section of the membrane. As depolarization happens down the entire membrane of the neuron, the action potential moves along the length of the axon passing along the signal. The act of the cell returning to its resting potential is called repolarization. During this stage, the channel doors switch. The potassium channels open and the sodium channel doors shut. So potassium ions begin moving back outside the membrane. As these positive ions move out, the inside of the cell becomes more negative again. The cell returns to maintaining resting potential using the sodium-potassium pump. This neuron stays at rest until another signal initiates the action potential and causes the cell to depolarize. In the next video, you will further investigate the secret to signals and look at how one neuron communicates with another.